I now have a neck to reshape. The, uh, the repair up here, you can still see a little dot, but to be honest, there's dots and, and inclusions in the wood anyway. Uh, it feels almost perfect, and uh, I'm very happy with that little repair. The neck, however, the neck, however, is going to be is going to be interesting. Now, this is my standard C-shaped carve. It's it's a very comfortable, and it's not particularly deep either. So it's not as deep as the V, mostly V-shaped neck of our washburn here. And uh, in fact, what I need to do is before I start carving, I'm going to show you uh, a close-up of this neck and uh, what we're trying to achieve. But first of all, I'm going to talk about what we, what we will use to achieve this. Now, there are as many ways to make or shape a guitar neck as there are makers of guitar necks. Uh, my personal favorite, and the one I'm going to be using today, is this. This is a Japanese saw file or saw rasp uh, made by Shinto in Japan. Uh, on one side, it's a very, very, very coarse blade. On the other, it's fine. And essentially, it's made out of hacksaw blades that have got teeth on both sides. And it's got this lattice pattern that clears waste very, very rapidly. And uh, thus means that you can, sh you can work much faster. The coarse side is amazing for rough work and it speeds up the process no end. I, I absolutely love it. Uh, another option is just a standard rasp or <laughs> if you happen to live in a horsey neighborhood, this here is a farrier's rasp. It's giant and uh, again, coarse on one side, finer on another. These are about 20 or 30 pounds, but it is the mother of all rasps. It will, it will, it will do the job and it will do at least the flat work, the flatter sections, if you know what I mean. So the long, the longest part of the neck. Talk properly then. Uh, and it does that really rapidly and, uh, and works very well. You then move on to a standard, here's a good example, standard, file, uh, rasp, sorry, flat on one side and rounded over on the other. And um, this is actually a hand cut rasp. So the teeth are not uniform and as such will not leave scrapes and scratches and stripes in your work as you go. Uh, in fact, I don't even have a machine made rasp in my possession apart from this, apart from this farrier's rasp. Now you see these teeth here are uniform and as you work they will cut in lines basically. Uh, now this comes, becomes useful alongside its coarser brother. Um, rasps are boys, that's interesting. Most of my tools are girls. Hmm. Anyhow, um, to start shaping where the heel is and where the where you move into the neck joint uh, and so those are the the raspy type tools i have seen people use a knife a carving knife now i don't actually have somebody's stolen my normal one but essentially here we go carving knife like this and that's how they use it. They just go along and cut away big swathes of uh, the neck. Now, that is a valid option, and if you grew up doing that, um, I've got no problem. Uh, it doesn't feel comfortable to me. I, I, prefer, I prefer rasps because that's, that's how I've uh, been doing it for years. <sighs> Another option is something like a spoke shave. Uh, this is uh, a blaster. I don't know. She's not even sharp. I don't use these very often. A lot of people do and they swear by them. And I really do... <laughs> Cutting rather than abrading 
is always better, to be honest. If you cut with a blade, it will get you a better finish and it can work faster. The only reason I don't use these is because my saw file really does the job very, very well um, and rapidly. Uh, my initial carving, <laughs> my initial carving is done with an angle grinder and a flap disc. Now, if you want to see how I'll make a neck from scratch, I'll do the roughing out with one of those. And that is, um, uh, I'll go and get one. Here it is. Here we go. So I've got a flap disc on here. And it's a welder's wheel, a welder's flap disc, a zirconia flap disc, about 60 or 80 grit. Make sure you are wearing goggles. And it's surprisingly easy to control. Uh, now, in this case, I'm doing a, a, a reshaping a neck, not making one from scratch. So we don't need this overkill. Uh, there we have it. Now. I am going to use my Japanese saw file uh, to cut a V-shape. And I'm not going to touch the bottom end here because I want that to move into a C. But I want it to go towards being V-shape up along the top here. So my guitar is currently sitting on a soft mat on my bench. and. Uh, this is almost sacrilegious, isn't it, really? Let's be honest. Um, this is a perfect finish, and that's going to be, we're going to have to cover that next. <laughs> this does feel naughty. And essentially, I'm just rasping away where I don't want the material to be. Now, I've left the strings on this guitar because I don't want. I don't want it to be, uh, I want it to be under tension for as long as humanly possible. Uh, I am going to take the, take the strings off and polish up the frets and put a new set of strings on before it's uh, done. But for now, I'm going to leave the neck under tension so that it, it doesn't move too much. Uh, and essentially, this is the process. Uh, I'm using the coarser side of the rasp. and removing material and feeling as I go and essentially we're turning it into a V and this is going to be lovely. Now what I must say is as you do this sort of work always check if you've got something that you're copying go back touch that neck have a feel of it go back to the one that you're carving and and touch a lot of carving, a lot of guitar building is all about how you feel with your fingers. Because your fingers are much, much more precise at measuring these things than your eyes are. Take that eyes, you're not as good as your fingers. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. Once I have finished off on the finer side of my Japanese saw file, which gives me, well, I'd say roughly a 60 grit finish, if you're going to refer to sandpaper. Uh, what you need to do next is finesse the angles where the headstock meets the, the neck and smooth that out so it's comfortable. This is your user interface the neck you have to it has to be right and this here is a little handmade uh, rasp or hand cut rasp at least and it's got a flattish radius and then a more curved radius on here and I'll use that to just to work that curve in slowly and gently check it see how it feels you don't even need to look at it to know if you've got it right now with every guitar neck, you want it to be flat from as far up the neck towards the nut as possible. 
So for the longest length of the, of the neck, you want it to be nice and flat. And this volute is actually a little bit too far that way uh, for the way I build things nowadays, because we've had this guitar for, for a number of years. I'd have the volute directly over the nut, so that the neck is even flatter further up that way. However, the way you check this is fairly simple. As long as we're assuming that your fretboard edge is nice and straight, Hold that up against the light source. You've got a window behind the camera now. And looking at that straight edge, you use that as a reference point. Rotate the guitar or rotate the neck around, and you will be able to see if any part of it is not straight. You don't want waves and curves and things like that. Now, my next stage is sandpaper. I'm going to go through the grits from 120 through to about 320. So 120, 180, 240, 320. And uh, I'm going to fine sand the whole neck. I've obviously left some finish here. And then the client wants me to add a basic oil finish. And again, you don't need to see me doing that. An oil finish is an oil finish. Rub on some Danish oil or teak oil. Um, or even you can use true oil, which is not either true nor an oil. It's a varnish based. It's, it's an oil varnish, basically. Um, anyway, wipe it on, polish it down. I will be back, well, in about half a day, judging by my time, and in about 30 seconds or less, depending on how quickly I edit this and how soon I stop talking with the finished product. Magic. <laughs>